Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session tonight. I'm Saurabhishwar Sen, welcoming all of you to an interactive session as a part of the Catalyst Knowledge Transfer Series, which we have been pretty like regular at, I must admit, since the lockdown last year. Since March 2020, the Catalyst Knowledge Series in formats of webinars, free of cost sessions, interactive knowledge transfer, knowledge diffusion initiative on weekdays and weekends across the last 20 months have literally been like an antidote to all of us during these very different times. I, I can't thank all of you enough for supporting this initiative from us at the start of which we did, did not really expect that we will be able to cover 44 such webinars and to, tonight happens to be the 45th of that webinar series that we are so glad to present to all of you. In the 44 series, 44 webinars over the last 20 months, we have had a participation of over 1700 plus people joining our sessions, interacting with our speakers, exchanging ideas, raising some very pertinent, valuable questions, which has certainly led to a more resilient template that we have all been working with. At Catalyst since 2011, we have been mentoring, grooming, building awareness towards the opportunities in social science by training students of classes 11th and 12th to pursue bachelors in social science, liberal arts and law offered by the schools in India and abroad. Supporting undergraduate students, college passouts, university graduates to pursue masters in the specialized interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary fields of social science. And in the last 10 years, Catalyst alumna have worked and have started working across the multifarious setups in our society, whether it is public relations or public policy, environment ecology, social epidemiology, social work, working for the, the disabled, working for the elderly, working for women, working for transgenders, working for mental health, and researching across the different questions which make us think and rethink and reimagine the society that we are part of so that we can sustain our future ahead. I'm extremely delighted to introduce to all of you one of our Catalyst alumna tonight in Meghna, who has taken out her time, her very, very busy schedule as a film creator, writer, content creator, and it was just like three or four days back that we connected, reconnected after a little break. And uh, Meghna, uh, you know, he, she, she left uh, no stones unturned to ensure that we can create this session tonight and interact with all of you to understand the opportunities and the emerging pathways with her specialization in the field of media. Meghna from the Catalyst class of 2017 is an ex-media and cultural studies student from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, and an active filmmaking profession. After graduating, she worked in various avenues in filmmaking, including corporate and brand films, features and documentaries. She's a passionate writer and an aspiring designer with an ambition to capture human stories through her own unique lens. When not busy working, Meghna loves to listen to rock music, read thriller novels, and learn about marine life and conservation. And I think we can very well add, she also loves to interact with aspiring students in all of you, budding professionals from the field of media, media enthusiasts who really want to understand through the eyes of Meghna, the opportunities that lay untapped or which are around the evolving and the very dynamic world of the media industry. 
Meghna can't thank you enough for being with us tonight. And uh, uh, I would definitely request every participant on that note to be absolutely free because Meghna, uh, when we were deciding about the flow of the event, she was very categorical that, you know, she would love to answer your questions. And uh, I, I told her that, you know, well, that's, that's possibly the most important objective of our knowledge transfer session, that the knowledge that is transferred should obviously be an outcome of the queries and questions and the perspectives that the participants would also like to raise. So I would uh, request everyone, feel free to use the chat box as much as possible to write down your questions whenever it comes to your mind. If possible, we can definitely request all of you to also use your microphones whenever required to ask a question, to interact with Meghna as much as possible. And definitely, definitely, whenever feasible, keep your videos on because it's always good to see people on the screen, however near or far you might be. Thank you so much, Meghna. Which location are you in right now, if we may understand from your end? Uh, well, uh, first of all, thank you for such a warm, like such a warm introduction. And um, um, I, 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 I like, hi to everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining this session. It's, um, it's a matter of great pleasure to me to be able to share my experience and everything that I've learned so far in my journey with you. Um, to answer your question, sir, I am currently in Ladakh. Um, I came here a wow. week ago um, with a couple of friends um, as a workation, which is, you know, all the trend right now. So um, I thought, why not um, hop into the bandwagon? So, yeah, I'm currently in Leh City and I am um, heading north towards, uh, okay, not, maybe not, but I am heading to Nubra Valley tomorrow and, yes. yeah, hoping to... Have a good time over there. <laughs> That's amazing. Meghna live from Ladakh for all of you. And Meghna, uh, I mean, to get your uh, uh, session rolling, uh, I would just kind of uh, like to place a lead question which students keep on asking us a lot, especially with the opportunities with media. Um, they, we, we understand that uh, the media industry has certainly evolved a lot. It has become very broad. Um, but we would like to understand that the way you have seen the industry over the years now that you have been working, how would you like to present that sector to the participants to start off this interactive session? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I would say um, at the outset that the opportunities in the media industry are endless and it starts with um, sort of defining what media industry means to you because um, every, I mean, the, the biggest learning that I have had in my um, career or learning um, journey is that media is a huge spectrum. And within media, there are so many niches, there are so many avenues and so many different um, sectors that um, literally anybody, you know, can find something that they would like to do in media. So I am a sucker for films. So I wanted to sort of start this um, interactive session with this quote from one of my favorite films, The Pursuit of Happiness. And it goes like, don't ever let anyone tell you, you can't do something. And that's precisely what um, essentially the media industry is all about like you can literally do anything and um, yeah, having said that I, I feel like what is most important for us to understand now is that um, the digital sort of let's call it a revolution um, is what is you know um, sort of dynamically changing the media industry every day I would say, and, and I deliberately want to say every day because that's the pace of, you know, um, pace of change that I experience and, you know, even I struggle to sort of keep up sometimes. So um, I would say for as in terms of a career opportunity in media, it entirely depends on the person that um, people come from 
varied interests like some people uh, excel at social media some people excel at journalism some people excel excel at filmmaking so all of to my understanding all of these things are um you know sectors under the media industry that um, anybody could venture into and uh, yeah and um, i would like to take you through all the things that i have sort of done so far i've been a media professional for the last um, close to 3 years now and um, so i after passing out of tiss uh, from the media and cultural studies degree i started working in the corporate filmmaking industry where i worked with brand films and branded documentaries which is something i did not know existed before i joined uh, that company and i worked with live streams i worked with ads um you know and um so i learned a lot from there i was an assistant director with a with a corporate film making agency and um earlier this year i quit that job to to become a part of a feature film crew in bombay again as an assistant director and that is like a that was a completely different world from everything i had done till then and that was like two months of on location shoot for a feature film and um, and um, it was like stressful to say the least but uh, super exciting obviously and uh, yeah and then after that once that got over and second wave happened so i sort of ventured into content writing and here i would like to actually quote one of my professors from the media and cultural studies um, department and he said writing is the most recession proof skill that you can ever have <laughs> and you know and uh, i and i really believe that yeah this um this is something that i have sort of experienced and i've learned that yeah this is probably true and um from content writing i went into i started working with a documentary filmmaker uh, who i am currently working with on a on a climate change film um i've also ventured into projects here and there um where i've helped um companies with organizations with social media social media post designing a little bit of strategy and i'm also learning design um and when i say design again that's a huge field but let me just say i'm learning graphic design um um and i've and that's again a hands on thing that i've been learning and i'm sort of still in the process of learning and these are just the things that i have done and i have known other people who with a degree in media or even without a degree in media actually the media industry is broad enough to accommodate people from um like diverse backgrounds i have seen them venture into entrepreneurship research and academia of course journalism management roles in like large companies communication roles content strategy marketing video games video games creation video games of uh, designing publishing television etc and you know these are all the avenues and 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 i i want to say that everything that's listed here is still not an exhaustive list of all the avenues that exist in the media industry and that's how large it is so yeah so if you ask me about career opportunities in india there are plenty it entirely depends on the person you are and where you come from in terms of your interests yeah i'm am i still like i hope i'm still visible and audible i hope there's not an internet issue yeah there's it's, it's fine uh, the slide is still the same it's okay yeah right okay yeah that was the answer to your question sir um how i would like to present career opportunities uh right thank you um uh, i i would also uh, like to understand since you mentioned that uh, the media is so much about how you uh, want to look at it um and uh, if if you know a, a student who is starting off with the sector and is very keen to understand um what are the skills that you know they might be uh, considering Uh, to be part of the sector so uh, megna would you uh, like to 
talk about anything specific in terms of skill, whether it is soft skill or hard skill, uh, is does anything come to your mind that which students might want to um, nurture? Because as we know that many of the colleges, in fact, most of the courses, they have a selection procedure, right? They do ask people questions, but more than those specific rounds, what we are trying to figure out that is there anything foundational in terms of knowledge or skill, which uh, a lot of aspirants or even like people who might even want to shift to a media sector at some point in their life should consider? Um, definitely, I would uh, say that um, in terms of like, first of all, um, let me just say that the media studies course is broad enough that you do not really need to have a very mm. specific skill set. Having said that, I would also say that um, if you ask me, I feel like there are four um, foundational knowledge segments that a person aspiring to be a media professional should nurture in themselves. And this is, and, I'm, and I say nurture because I don't want to say that they should, uh, you know, pursue um, a, a, an institutional institutional degree per se. But these are things that you can nurture um, in your um, knowledge, right? So one of them definitely, um, in fact, I think I had a slide on this. Let me just sort of uh, move no to problem. that if that's okay. Um, no yeah. Yeah. So, so here, so, um, I would say, yeah, these are the four things that I would say are very important. If you want to be a media professional is just an overall understanding of the things around you. That's like a very broad thing. And underneath that, I would say society, like the society you come from. And, um, I I'm seeing understanding society and culture, but again, um, anybody, um, uh, I mean, like, I won't say anybody, but like having studied in this, I know better than to say society and culture as a very, um, you know, like a very holistic, like all encompassing things, because we all know how, um, um, like how many different sort of aspects there are even within society and culture, but basically the, the sphere that you come from, you should have a very, I would say that it's very important to have an understanding of that. And, uh, you know, like the larger, um, let's just say the larger um, societal systems around you. Because essentially, any form of media borrows a lot from the society that we live in and also is a sort of a reflection of um, the society that we live in. It's rooted in society and its cultural implications. So having a knowledge of that is very important. Um, and this is something that even um, you know comes into play um, at interviews in colleges when you're applying for a degree uh, in media studies is that um, they do ask you about current affairs, about how you understand certain aspects of, um, you know, development, society, stuff like that. That's one. Secondly, understanding that media is not one thing and there are several forms within media. That is very important because media and communication is just an umbrella term. Like I said, there are several sectors underneath it. And it's important to have an idea about how these various sectors sort of play out on their own um, and sort of intersect with each other, right? Like, you know, let's say for example, films and journalism, like they play a huge part vis-a-vis -vis each other, but they're also these two very different, very, um, what should I say, very um, exclusive um, things, right? That's um, the second one. And I would definitely say um, that understanding the digital landscape, because we live in a digital world now, and there's no denying that. And that is uh, sort of evolving every day. And the change that happens, it's so fast. It is almost like difficult to keep up with. But understanding that change, understanding how um, digitization, how technology is shaping the whole media industry, the whole media sector, it's very important. And it is very important for somebody who is um, who wants to be a future professional in this industry. Because um, even like as we, as time passes, this, this particular uh, factor will play a huge role in the understanding of media. And secondly, your interest. Again, I come back to that because that is most important, is that 
whether you are interested in journalism, whether you're interested in films, whether you're in interested in uh, marketing, whatever it may be, it's very important for it's very important to have an understanding of that particular niche. And um, like for example, I am a I have always been interested in films. And so in my interview at Tata Institute, I was asked like, what is your interest? Um, and what do you hope to learn about in this course? And I said, I want to learn about how to make a film. And they asked me about my favorite film, about what I learned from that, implications of the film. So it's very important um, to understand, not just at a conceptual level, but even perhaps at a, at a technical level as much as you can, about the particular about your particular area of interest so in my understanding these four are the foundational um, sort of knowledge base that i would recommend everybody for wanting to pursue a career in media should definitely have thank you uh, Megan. that was very lucid and well uh, simplified i must admit um, i would like to uh, take a question from the participant and I would read it out for you, sure. Meghna. Uh, Gargi, Gargi asks sure. you a question that I have seen a few talk shows of US, example, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. And he covers current affairs in a way that entertains yeah. people and helps them find an opinion. Gargi asks you, Meghna, that is there a chance for journalists to start something like a talk show or do you think that is much more inclined to comedians? No, I would say not because, um, uh, you know, I'm not a journalist. Let me just like say that. But I do follow journalists and I think there is incredible innovation happening in that sector. I don't now hear, I do not mean the mainstreams of journalism because we all know how that goes, but alternate journalism, right? And there is, and you know, something like, somebody like Trevor Noah, um, can we really demarcate between, uh, you know, can we really demarcate what he does as saying that, no, this is journalism, no, this is comedy, uh, we can't, right? And I feel like, um, um, I definitely feel like um, journalism has a huge scope in that way. In fact, very recently, um, Rana Ayu is a journalist I used to follow. Um, and she started her Substack. And Substack is like this email newsletter um, platform, which is gaining huge traction now. And, you know, so, yeah, I would say that's, that's exactly what I meant by the opportunities are endless, is that you are free to envision your, like, you are free to envision it however you want. And, you know, as long as your messaging is in the right place, as long as you know exactly what you want to do, you can use um, like all the avenues, all the tools of media around you to create anything unique. That's that's how I. That's essentially how I see um, the media industry. Is that there is endless opportunity to be unique in your own way. Great. I hope Gargi. I you, hope that answers uh, your question, yes. Gargi. Uh, from Gargi, uh, Meghna, uh, if we can take another question from Himani. Himani asks that can anyone from any degree, uh, she asks, can anyone from any degree take up media? For example, an MBA in marketing, can they get into media industry or do they have to pursue a master's degree in media studies or culture or any, any allied field she means? Um. Okay, so to answer that, um, let's say, okay, for a degree in media, um, you can be of any background to pursue a degree in media. Let me just clear that out. For example, I was a political science student before I yeah. became a media student and then became a filmmaking professional. So, uh, yeah, so to pursue a degree in media, you really, I don't really think that you need a specific background. But to be a media industry professional, see, the, the sad part is that I personally do not, not think that you need a master's degree in media studies to be a media professional. But unfortunately, um, uh, dig, the, you know, the whole importance that lays in a degree is just too strong in, in, a, in the world we live in. And although I do not agree with that, I do not think that yeah. that is how it should happen. But having said that, though, 
I also do not, I mean, from a very technical point of view, um, I also do not think that it's a necessity because in the industries that I have worked in, for example, in the film industry, I have come across um, like, I don't know, innumerable professionals who were engineers, who were um, techies before they decided to become camera people. Right or or or, or uh, before they decided to become um, a scriptwriter, right? So things like that, and even then, and you know, you uh, yeah. So I do not think that I also know. In fact, I also know of somebody who was, um, I think, a tech techie um, in some industry, but he quit that to become become a writer, and now he probably I think he works with Shabang um, as a writer. So so yeah, I do not personally think, but yeah, obviously having a degree is given um, too much of an importance in the world we live in whether or not we like that so unfor- that's an unfortunate truth yeah I hope that that answers your question right thank you Meghna uh, we move to the next question and of course like uh, Meghna you, you can you are most welcome to uh, steer the session if you feel you want to take the question right away or you want to move ahead to any specific uh, perspective of yours so um, no we could we could um, yeah. continue right with another question for right. sure thank you thank you so shoptuk shoptuk mukhopadhyay uh, writes that i am a student of manipal university and my course is media and communication but unfortunately due to the current situation my offline classes have been paused but I really want to know about this course to keep myself updated. So how should I start? Uh, Shoptuk, I think we all want to tell you that you are not alone. We are all in this together. Everyone's off- offline classes have been paused. So Meghna, uh, Shoptuk really wants to know that how c- can he stay in touch with the trends of the sector and you know how can he possibly even look forward to upskilling if I am if I could understand Shoptuk's question carefully. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, Shoptuk, um, I mean, I I was a student back in 2019. And I would say even other and, and I've been a professional since then, but the pandemic sort of has um struck even my um, you know, like uh, even though I don't I was into student it, it's still been difficult so you're definitely not alone offline class classes being paused especially in a degree like media which where i believe that hands-on um learning is very important is can definitely be a drawback but having said that um i mean um i would definitely like to say that read about the trends as much as you can um there are several um, like, I mean, it's, it's, if you just follow news related to the media industry specifically, you will know what is happening in the industry. Unfortunately, um, uh, 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 because of social distancing, uh, um, and you know, the whole pandemic situation, I'm not sure how much access you will have to sort of form a team and, creating your own working on your own projects because that is something that I would highly recommend like just you know you don't even need to have a camera you don't even need to have you know anything like for example I'm um okay so one one disclaimer to have all of my all the listeners here is because because I am essentially a filmmaking professional I tend to default go to the filmmaking example but please feel free to ask about other sectors also if you want to specifically ask about those but coming back to Shoptok's question, um, like, for example, as a filmmaking professional, if I was stuck in your um, situation, what I would have liked to do is if I, if I had the chance was to sort of just take out my phone and go around shooting whatever I can, see what I can do with it. And, you know, there are several courses online, um, free courses, paid courses under with Udemy, with Coursera, Skillshare. I mean, there are too many of those platforms. Um, that you could use to upskill, but just, you know, YouTube, if you just follow YouTube, if you just follow um, several channels like Studio Binder, there's a lot to learn. And, you know, if you, and if you just follow the work of um, other professionals who are like um, pros, um, there's a lot to learn. I think, I think learning never stops. 
and uh, there is always an avenue for learning if you really want to do it and uh, yeah unfortunately though i wish i could say that you know there is a specific way that you could work around the pandemic and uh, do something but pandemic has sort of come to define our lives unfortunately right now but yeah but i would definitely recommend for example if you want if you want to be uh, into any form of writing just start you know like a blog or something or 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 a, or an even an email newsletter on substack you know uh, something like that there are a lot of these free um um avenues that you could explore to just be in practice that's all i that's i think that's just that is what what is essential just be in practice don't lose touch of what you want to do with what you want to do i hope that answers your question shot sir right thank you so much megna for that answer so any any anything specific you want to talk of or do we take there are two two more questions i can locate in the chat box and shall i read the um, questions out to you sure sure okay. sure okay. sure sure right. yeah yeah um jayesh jayasmita uh, writes in the chat box uh, that um i guess she is talking about that uh, how to <clears throat> create time for writing as uh an ancillary uh you know engagement that's what she's asking possibly jayashmita if i'm not mistaken might be already working and uh, she wants to know megna that is there some sort of a magic formula or a hack that she can use to take out time in her 24 hours a day so that she can also engage with writing jashmita i i just first of all i just want to say that you and i are on the same boat <laughs> right now because i just recently i mean last week and completed a course in um um creative writing and i also want to like the next probably the next thing that i want to do is see if if there is any um opportunity for me to become published right um uh, but uh, yeah but i mean i would say if you have a day job it's um it and i mean it sort of depends on you how you make time like for example i know couple of um content writing um companies who hire freelancers and there are a lot of pe people there who um work just on the weekends uh writing content right and um um and i i know so they sort of try to balance out between that and there is really no um i mean easy hack to time management time management again is a life skill that takes years and years to learn um and i i is what i think because i like sir said right at the beginning my very busy schedule is not necessarily because i have a lot on my plate but because i am still learning how to manage my time but you know um and i would just say that um like i just like i told shokta is that even if you take out an hour um of your 24 hours to just dedicatedly devote to this one thing that you do then also you will make significant like coming from a very personal view here is i feel like whenever we have something on our mind that we want to do we feel like how do we maximize our time doing mm -hmm. that right mm -hmm. but i feel like that is not um that often doesn't turn out to be the approach because even even if you even without job um consideration there are so many other things that take up our time in the day so um so yeah i would say just like dedicate maybe one hour if if writing is your passion dedicate mm -hmm. one hour and um just mm -hmm. stick to it uh, that's you know that's all i can really say but if you and, and if you are looking for um um like avenues for publishing the thing about writing is uh like right now is what i've noticed is that uh, a lot of platforms have opened up which encourage writers to just write you know for example substack is one um juggernaut if you've heard of it juggernaut is um a, a platform where you can just go um submit your work and they publish it it's it's you know like 
like it's it's not like that you don't have the hassle of pursuing publishers going through literary agents and stuff like that then there is another site called pencil there is a site called submittable which is essentially they have contests and you can just write so i would say just keep writing whenever you can and um, just keep you know learning in the process and building your portfolio and eventually you know i mean when you do feel like yes you want to take up this full time you will essentially know when that happens and you will have enough work to sort of have a head start is what i can say i hope jayashmita you got the uh, hold of some magic potion to take out time which is definitely as megna mentions um, a life skill which each of us at different phases keep discovering and rediscovering right how do i create that extra time to my own self right exactly so exactly. right and uh, as uh, megna also takes sneaks out little water break at her end i would like to take this opportunity also to uh, uh, welcome because i just spotted uh, srijita ma'am from loreto college if i'm not mistaken who uh, dropped in thank you ma'am for taking out your time amongst a pretty busy college schedule to come and listen to megna and be part of the session thanks a lot not at all thank you for letting me in i joined when it's almost over and i'm sorry about that not okay. at all ma'am we still have i'm sure some uh, compelling content from the content created in megna for all of us in the session thank you uh, thank you so forward. much for joining ma'am it's an honor having you here not at all the pleasure is mine moving forward uh, if i may uh, take one more question megna because i feel uh, the, the questions are sure. also helping all of us to gain but good perspectives and that's what questions are meant to be right uh, questioning always clears out Absolutely. our pathways much better um shinoy shinoy uh, has a question for you that most of she mentions uh, good media and entertainment firms i'm sure all media and entertainment firms are good uh, most of the good entertainment firms media firms ask for experience shinoy writes uh she's asking uh, megna that can you name some startups or organizations where we can start our journey as a media and entertainment student or can you share your journey post this so maybe you can choose how you want to go i think yeah. i would share my, my journey post this because i think about um shinoy essentially wants to say um when um um you know by good media and entertainment firms is are the bigger names like um i don't know i mean you know like uh, for example i applied to red chilies after um in a very ambitious spell um towards the end of my this um uh this um course and i didn't get a response from them and that was the case for um most of them most of the bigger names in the um, film industry where i where i personally wanted to sort of try and and i and i know that the same thing happened for a lot of um quite a few of my friends who were trying to get into let's say an advertising agency or a journalist or or, or you know news media outlet and that it is true that they do ask for um uh, what should i say experience and that was my experience as well that i i didn't um i couldn't crack it into many of these major names but what i did is that i sort of um just went on google and i just tried i spent a lot of time um just looking for a smaller um you know startup or 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 let's say a smaller firm or a firm that does very what should i say like a very um um you know like a like, um how should i say it like a very you know like a specific category of work um i i spent a lot of time researching the firms that i wanted to be a part of um ensured that the work that they are doing i like because always remember that uh do not just you know join any 
um thing that comes your way or just don't i mean it's very important that you because in your first job that's what i learned right in my first job i was lucky enough to join a startup which um i i got the chance to work with um very ambitious very inspiring people and uh, who were doing great work and who, and i could learn a lot from them and the kind of work was also something that i had an interest in so you know it's very important that you choose the organization um bases your interest so that you know that doesn't take a hit and um and yeah i mean i so i i applied to this um this um organization so it's a startup in bangalore called the red bangles film collaborative and they are into corporate filmmaking brand films branded uh, web series and documentaries ads stuff like that which is which uh, to my mind uh, back in 2019 was a good place for me to start because um it would essentially help me gain exp- field experience as well as you know not be as hard to get into as let's say feature films so that's that was my journey um if you ask me about names of startups this really not that's coming to my mind especially but maybe um other maybe i will i could share a list with sir later and he could like dispense that information yes, i think definitely we can do that megna i mean later on based on some of your queries yeah. we would love to have like a you know sort of a sure. this is in any case this session is a conversation starter right for all of us so we will definitely continue with uh, uh, an extended support from megna thank you uh, shinoy for that question and uh, um uh, uh, megna like uh, we have uh, some more time in hand if in case you want to share something more specific uh, that you would like to discuss um would you like to sir like would you like to like go on the course of the uh, like yes. course of the discussion that we had initially thought of why not why that not? would work Perfect. yeah so i i think um i mean so we were sort of wanting to discuss my media and cultural studies degree was helpful that was i think the next on our agenda to sort of um uh, talk about so would i would you like me to share about that surely ma'am okay so um so yeah so i pursued um media and cultural studies from the iss mumbai and uh, and and i i mean um so this is not a pitch for the for the degree or anything but just to sort of give you an idea as to the kind of things that a media degree does help you with right in case you're wanting to um apply to a media degree is that um for example media and cultural studies is um because it's a part of tiss and tiss is essentially a social science institution our degree had a huge it was a mix of theory and practice which is which we called uh, praxis um, right and and so um that was a sort of it prepared essentially that was done to prepare students for both the academic world as well as a more um, on field professional role right and um and um, so i sort of for example i went into the on field professional path a lot of my friends went into the academia path and they are still following it with great fervor and um, i think what essentially a degree um does although i did mention that uh, it's not important um and i still stick by that but um what a call rather than a degree what a university experience rather was 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 beneficial for me in terms of was a the fact that i could network i i came i i mean came to be associated with people from so many different backgrounds which is which is which i feel is a very essential thing um just to you know um broaden your world view like the more people you meet who come from a, a background that's not yours the more you understand about you know everything around you in a, on a much deeper level and um and a university also essentially gives you a lot of access to 
um, resources and archival material, which is also very, you know, for example, my my um, school gave me access to a lot of films that are just not found anymore, like very old films, um, right? So every university has benefits like that. And uh, yeah, so I guess it's the, it's more the holistic approach that sort of um, that sort of imparts a foundational aspect to not just to not just for your future career, but also you know how you what you take away from that also essentially defines the kind of person you are sort of forming into, right? Although that keeps changing, but that is uh, yeah. So and yeah, so I would say learning from um, experts from the field, uh, socializations, the networking, the hands-on training. Part of my uh, curriculum was to was that we got to make two documentaries, which were, I, I think in my entire two years degree, I learned more, uh, you know, while, while making those two films than I had done in classrooms, like in, in the entire degree. So hands-on training, again, is very important. While I also understand that now with COVID, that is the part that has taken the most hit and that is probably, you know, the worst outcome. Um, but yeah, so sort of, sort of, yeah, the, I would say the socializations were very important for me uh, just to, you know, come across people who were coming from all these different perspectives, different backgrounds and the, 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 the whole mix of ideas and confluence of thoughts that came on the table because of that. There's a huge learning curve just in that. Oh, so just while we are on that, I would just like to add something though, um, is that um, a large part of everything that I am currently as a media professional is uh, I learned on the job as well. Um, and, you know, and that is, that is something that we should always keep in mind that you're, um, that, you know, a lot of majority of media professionals that you might come across learn on the job. And that is, um, you know, there are a lot of practical skills that a degree will probably not be able to teach you, that you can only learn from experience because of the real world at the end of the day is very different from your classroom. And uh, yeah, so that's, I think that was one of the things that I had wanted to talk about, kind of forgot in the moment. And I would definitely suggest that um, keep your avenues open. Like when you're, when you're studying, when you're a beginner, um, uh, you know, unless of course you're passionate about something and you really want to pursue that, you always want to pursue that. But if you're new to the field and you're just understanding, keep your avenues open. Try out things before you discard them, saying that no, it's not for me. Because I have, um, I have, like, I never, I personally never thought that I would, you know, take an interest in designing someday. But look at me now, and I'm enjoying it so much. Um, Right. So it's, it's, I think, yeah, it's, it's definitely important to sort of keep our, keep approach the media field with an open mind. Yeah. I think somebody has their, Afia has their hand raised. Afia, if you can, if you would like to use the mic to ask a question, you can go ahead. Otherwise, Afia. Hello, asks, good evening. Yes. Yes, Afia, go ahead. Yeah. Um, am I audible, sir? You are audible. Go ahead. Thank you. So my question actually was for Meghna. It was more of like an advice that I would like to ask from her. Uh, since I am a student of journalism and mass communication and I have a, a very keen interest in content writing, but I want to pursue my writing in newspaper organizations. So I wanted to know if she can like, you know, um, give me a sort of or if you can like give me a sort of a small hint on you know how to start or if there is a process to begin with because I really don't know much about it so um, 
thank you afia for that question um unfortunately though i am not very well versed with the with you know these uh, sort of technical nitty gritties of the journalism industry but i mean how you get started and all because that is an avenue i have personally not ventured into um having said that though i do think i have i have friends who started off as junior reporters um with um, the news minute and organizations like uh, um the news minute um i think better in def i'm not wrong um so so that there are organizations who hire um as junior reporters or junior staff writers um right and um and you know just to sort of um like i like i mentioned earlier as well to uh, i forgot who to but um uh, you could also just you know um start a blog and write about um issues that are sort of um that you feel strongly about and just build your writing portfolio because um the, the thing is that even for even with freshers most organizations want to see if you've done something even if it is not in a professional capacity but if you've done something um you know um in your own time um uh, that that could add uh, that could that could reflect on your skills for the for the job that you're applying for so i would say um just you know keep if you're a, if you're if you're into content writing um uh, sorry if you're into journalism just keep writing about the topics that you feel strongly about build a portfolio because that is an and a portfolio i, I think people have an idea um i'm 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 not entirely sure but this is just something that i have sort of gleaned from a lot of people i've met is that um people have an portfolio you can only um experience which is an organization of professional capacity but they will definitely that's not true you can uh, show stuff that you've done on your own you can show, you show things that you've done on your own in fact that is highly encouraged and um if you're talking about content writing well i um i sort of started content writing just in march and i have been content writing with a with a form in alcata so the little bit of network lag uh, from ignas and we'll just allow her to settle down we all know that she is logging in from lada so thank you for your patience everyone i think uh, it's a momentary latency we are dealing with megna should be back and to ask uh, also to while megna's coming back i would like to definitely there she is yeah yes megna if you want you can keep your video on or off as you as me? you deem am i audible you are audible megna if you want you can keep your video on and off as you deem fit in case mm. you want to save bandwidth yeah. no. so these are definitely the new dimensions of the medium with uh, the online framework and i guess we are all are quite warmed up to it yeah am i audible now you're audible megna sorry just me... give me a second to figure this no out problem. no problem okay great um yeah so sort of uh Okay, so where was I before I before my uh, internet? I, I think just, uh, you, yeah, you 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 were at, at the juncture of. I am not able to hear, sir. Okay. Hello, Meena. Uh, am I audible? No, I think. Uh... Yeah, can you can you? Yeah, I think I can hear you now. Can you just repeat what you were saying, sir? Yeah, can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Of course, yeah, no problem. So, uh, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you were talking about uh, your your learnings from people who have started writing, and you were also at the point that you started writing for a Calcutta firm. So, 
that's uh, where yeah. you, so you, i started writing i started content writing for this calcutta firm called yarn owls they are a new company they're quite a new company but i would say that they are doing good work um there's a lot of work um and um and uh, it's a freelance thing so if anybody wants to try could probably reach out to them having said that though i am not this is since this is the only um content writing firm that i have been attached with i am not really very sure about the other firms that are there but again this is something sir that maybe we could just um collaborate on create a Surely. directory and share with people Surely, absolutely. We would love to do that, like a, uh, like a dash dashboard of opportunities yeah. and content Definitely. creation yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Uh, I'll just type it out for you. If I hope, uh, I think that would be better. Called Yarn Owls, they're a new company. They are Calcutta based. There is also, by the way, yeah, there is also um. um so there there are um uh, like firms which are coming up now um it just struck me uh, there's like there's pepper content and even you know um like my past company they work on this model where they basically um sort of work with freelance uh, freelance writers let's say right so pepper content is some is a place that you could probably look at although they are a little bit more niche um, um and they are like they um ask you for samples of their work and all but uh, and they have a huge directory they have a huge like a network a network base so but that is definitely another uh, something that you can come up with and yeah definitely sir we would like we would get in touch with each other to sort of create surely, a dashboard surely absolutely absolutely uh, if if uh, there are no more questions megna i might uh, uh, ask yeah. you that uh, a little bit about uh, अच्छा सो जयश्मिता इज आस्किंग क्वेश्चन ऑन द टेक्निकल पार्ट ऑफ ब्लॉग राइटिंग सो मे बी जयश्मिता दैट इट सेल्फ आई डोंट नो लाइक इफ मेघना वुड वांट टू आंसर दैट बिकॉज आई एम इट माइट बी अ वेरी ब्रॉड स्पेस दैट इट सेल्फ कैन बिकम अनदर वेबिनार फॉर अस जयश्मिता थैंक यू फॉर दैट आइडिया बट मेघना वुड यू लाइक टू ऐड वन और टू लाइंस एनीथिंग दैट स्पेसिफिकली जयश्मिता शुड कीप इन माइंड while writing a blog um i i'm a little i honestly i'm i'm not very sure what you mean by the technical part of right. blog writing uh, whether it is uh, you know whether you want me to sort of comment on a specific like a like a wordpress or a substack or something like that or just general um um what should i say techniques because if it's a blog there is no technique it's your thing True. Uh, you are essentially a self publisher at that point in time when you can literally write anything how to set up a blog for sure um so i i tried um wordpress for a very long time and i found it a little difficult to be very honest and um and i wasn't able to figure it out but right now i have been writing a blog on um uh, substack and um, i mean the blog is really not that great or anything i use it sort of as my uh sort of my you could say journal to sort of just uh, put out my experiments in writing let's just say um uh, but substack is a platform that you could very easily start a blog on um it's very simple it's very user friendly and um the setup and all is much easier than wordpress in my experience obviously um i, I people find wordpress i mean i know people who find wordpress um much better um but then again that's the thing with a blog right how do you define a blog um i i i mean i have seen people uh, maintain instagram blogs like they just write on instagram and you know it's 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 just the thing that how you want to imagine it and you know there's literally really no rules to it right that's true um uh, so yeah. jashmita is yeah great okay okay uh megna another uh, maybe final question if in case anyone else also wants to ask uh, you're most welcome we have maybe last 5 <clears throat> minutes or so um that we can uh, definitely put in um uh, megna everyone wants to know that you know uh, through your eyes how do you see the media sector 
now evolving because we've had a pandemic now. Uh, the pandemic also created uh, very new uh, dimensions of the media, right? We saw people asking for help over social media through those uh, you know, communities and services. We also ha have enough stories of certain medium getting set up, right? Which is still sustaining itself you know, over the months now. Uh, I know so many of my individuals who actually have left you know, their previous full-time jobs to actually manage these groups in a very professional yeah. format. And it's, it's very interesting to see that these groups, which were initially on a Facebook page or maybe on a WhatsApp group even, have now kind of uh, evolved into platforms for, for, for community health services, uh, through those platforms, a lot of them are creating websites, right, in, in which resources are getting uh, uh, presented. They are also hiring uh, writers, as Meghna tells us, that writers never go out of fashion in some format or yeah. the other. Uh, so, Definitely. yeah, and uh, so uh, we would like to know that at this juncture, um, because everyone is talking that we have had a change in our education policy, presumably for the first time ever, at least on maybe on paper in terms of the policy being put out. What could be the newer trends, Meghna, you feel that uh, we should be looking out for in terms of opportunity in the media sector? Definitely. Like I said right at the beginning, right? Like it's, it's an ever-evolving field. Um, and and I, I feel like the reason why media evolves so much is because media, you know, media communication, that's like the first place where we sort of gauge change. Um, any change that happens in society, it, it expresses itself through media, right? So, um, yeah, the COVID uh, pandemic. I guess again, there must be a latency. We regret this because, of course, like uh, Meghna is at a pretty seriously high altitude in Leh, for which she might be lagging out. So we maybe allow just a few seconds more. Thank you everyone for staying with us and uh, we'll just wait if Meghna can be back. We just wait for a little more time for Meghna to return. Thank you for staying with us.
Okay, Meghna is back with us. Thanks everyone for being patient. Meghna, yeah, I'm very no sorry worries. about that. No worries, no worries. Right. So I think uh, if 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 you could like you know sum up, if you want to even keep your video off to save bandwidth, if that works, whichever way. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will do that. Uh, yeah. Great. So I think what I was just I was just finishing off on was that. Um, so yeah, but, but the traditional channels did get hit. Although a lot of them has, uh, they are making a comeback for sure. Like for example, filmmaking is definitely making a comeback. It's a different issue that uh, the nature of films that are now going to be, um, you know, getting um, distribution that is probably going to change a little. But then, um, I, what I essentially want to say is that the traditional channels are also coming back, and um, in in um, with a few changes, um, and um, there are a lot of new channels that are opening up. For example, um, short films are something that I have seen pick up. Um, and, and people are creating films on their phones. People are creating films about uh, just their lives in the pandemic, being stuck in a room. You know, basically, I think what has happened is that um, um, being socially distant, sitting at home has just opened up our imagination and uh, there are and and people have just started coming up with so many new and different things and just coming back to what you were saying sir um and you know how i th- i feel like essentially media has played a huge role um in um uh, not just media even communication channels um social media platforms um and you know various other all of these different things have played a huge role in how we combated um covid which is something I saw firsthand, even happening on our Catalyst group, and um, and you know, um, and then and just you know the the kind of um, there was there was some great work done um, uh, in terms of documentation, in terms of um, finding you know what should I say, like you know just how we sort of in a post COVID world how the media sort of our approach to media picked up. Um, I have seen, for example, a lot of entrepreneurship um, sort of um, aspirations developing uh, because um, I, I, I really don't know why that happens, but that has been happening. But I've seen a lot of my, even within my friends, I have seen a lot of people wanting to become um, podcasters, wanting to become, uh, you know, have, have their own uh, talk show, have their own. So, you know, just all these new, I feel like the, you know what the physical the physical engagement where that is lacking now it has essentially picked up in in the digital sphere um and uh, that is how that is one of the major things which is sort of um changing uh, our perception of media and i feel like it's just it's just going to keep on changing and evolving right. Thank you so much, Meghna. And of course, at the end of the day, what it has definitely happened, taking cues from what Meghna mentioned, that the media, the medium, technology has definitely brought us much, much closer. In spite of physical distancing, social distancing, it's technology uh, that has brought uh, Meghna at Ladakh, at Leh, uh, in every one of our uh, you know, computers, if not our mobile phones, right? So we... we yeah, although with a bit of a disturbance. I guess, you know, Meghna, uh, the, the, the type of learnings that we have uh, definitely picked up from your, your stories, your experiences, they outweigh those little latencies from Ladakh to a great extent. And we have had a, a very patient, uh, good listening audience uh, and their uh, uh, you know, focus certainly uh, makes us realize that we wish we could continue. But uh, I can assure you that like how Meghna mentioned that this is definitely a conversation starter for all of us. Uh, we would love to see opportunities where you know, we can connect back to each of you um, from Catalyst or, you know, through the opportunities that Meghna is also part of, uh, whether it is writing, whether it is filmmaking, 
uh, editing and the evolving opportunities of the media sector where every one of us has have our own contribution to uh, to to definitely contribute to a more more uh, uh, in a better days ahead. Meghna, thank you so much. Firstly, uh, to uh, share your time with us, uh, creating this very interesting uh, evening out of your uh, workation that you mentioned uh, at, at at Lay, and we wish all of wish you and your team members the very best. Stay well. Uh, enjoy Ladakh. And uh, definitely, uh, participants, we will be sharing a feedback with all of you very soon after following this session so that you can put in your queries more back to us. And uh, wherever we are located, the medium at the end of the day has the potential to connect uh, us through our queries, through our uh, inquiries, and through our understanding uh, to, to resolve our clarity forward. Thanks everyone for putting your time in. Again, a thank you thanks. so much for being such a sorry, I cut you off, but I just wanted to thank everyone for being such a patient listener. Um, I am I don't really make a business out of giving seminars or talking at uh, webinars, but you know, it was, was really nice interacting with all of you. Please feel free to reach out to me. I'm available on LinkedIn. You could also send me a mail. I'll just share my details here. And yeah. So please continue. Surely, no problem. So Thanks a lot, Meghna. No problem, Meghna. Thank you, everybody. And uh, as Meghna mentions that adaptability, adjustment, understanding the market trends are so crucial. You know, the way you apply yourself. Medium is, of course, again, uh, what has been one of the strongest points for me as a learning in this uh, session is that medium is how we transmit, how we communicate, we get to know each other. We understand change is taking place again with the media, so it's 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 so so crucial that you know we have our own parts to play to uh, make those systems and structures more resilient. Once again, thank you everyone to take out your time. Thank you, ma'am, once more uh, from the college, uh, Srijita, ma'am, to uh, listen to us and be with us tonight. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate everyone's presence with us and keep supporting us like the way you have all done so that we can create and generate more content that would be meaningful to all of you in the coming days. Stay well, stay safe, follow the COVID protocols and stay connected with us as well as with Meghna. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.